Woo! Woo! Hey, I think we're live. Um, welcome to the Spark of Madness Game of Thrones Season 7. Get excited! Right. I don't it. It. it is Sparta! <laughs> ah, I don't have the same level of uh, like weight from the last season as you guys had. Are uh, you on a diet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the whole thing. Yeah. Um, okay, so Season 7. Uh, this part of the podcast is going to be about uh, talking about season six into the and our predictions for season seven, um, and then we're actually going to do uh, another show right after the premiere to talk about it. So come back right afterwards to hear what we had to think. Please, um, please, we need you. I am Matt Crager. This is Ben. You know us from all the other video Spark of Mana stuff. We're semi famous. Semi. That much. You drive semis? <laughs> this, yeah, semis. Semi. They're called tractor trailers in like Maine. Truckers. Yeah. And this is Brandon. <laughs> Hello. This is Brandon. You were on the uh, one of the other podcasts though, the Being Genuine yes. podcast. Yeah, but this is your first live video on screen. Yes, it's camera. so <laughs> As well as all of your this uh, is all Brandon's decoration. Stuff. Yeah, I mean, he's just, and it's actually all my wife's. Stuff. Yeah, but yeah, she's I, here I get and to live in the house. Yeah, normally he's, he's a true fanboy of, of Game of Thrones. Definitely, um, but more than me and Matt. Yeah, I don't right. know about that. Yeah. Well, yeah. so I guess that's, that's a good way to start. To, I have a personal life <laughs> to to level set a little bit. Um, so to be honest, like I crammed in all six seasons of Game of Thrones and finished it maybe two months ago and I did it in like a month's time so I, I just became so I don't know all of the I've not been a part of all the discussions in years past and I'm the same page as you and okay. the only reason I got into this is probably the same reason you got into this is because, because of Brandon <laughs> Brandon gave me his, his subscription code to uh, his HBO account it's a guy I watching Big for three months right? I, I don't remember that part of it <laughs> yeah, you did. At least not on camera. Well, I remember that part. But, but I paid for my own. I was going to say, I might have suggested that no, you get your own. He did. I know I eventually got it because, you know, I'm an animal wood. But, mm -hmm. I'm, you know, I'm like a Game of Thrones character and I want to do it my, you know, like, you know what? Thank you for getting me started in this. But I can, for sure. I can make my own lane on HBO Go. But or now, whatever it is. Brandon, now. you're the, you're really the the maester of this podcast. <laughs> it is. Because you've got. I need my chain. we'll see. Yeah, you should have gotten you the big chain. That would have been really funny. <laughs> but, so, Did I guess. Do you man? What, <laughs> how, how into it are you? What, like, let's just, because I know, like, we're going to get into some, like, prediction-y talk and uh, we just want to make sure we're on. Uh, I, I like it quite a bit. So, I, I'm not going to say, I haven't, like, went back and reread the books multiple times, but I have read all the books and watch all the shows and well, I, I, I listen to podcasts and I, I definitely enjoy the whole Game of Thrones thing. Yeah. Um, I might be wearing a Targaryen ring as my wedding ring, but <laughs> okay, yeah, you know, maybe I should have just started. Yeah, you should have started there. Okay. All right, we get it. Yeah, we got it. Well, Brandon right. told me the story like he, he watched the first episode, then bought the book. Yeah, that's read, true. The, read the whole book the first week. Like before episode before two. Before episode two. That's true. I, I, I watched the first episode and really loved the way the story was kind of being laid out, especially that opening scene, you know, the, the prologue uh, beyond the wall with the rangers that were out. And I, yeah. I just really dug it, and it sunk its teeth into me. For so, sure. yeah. He's a real true uh, knowledgeable force of Game yep. of Thrones. So, Nick Shelton was going to join us, but he had an emergency. So, he's here in spirit. Um, I don't. He may even be watching. I don't know. I have to pull that up. We miss you. Um, uh, and we killed Aaron, so he's not. Yeah, here. he's not in this park. Um, <laughs> uh, if you'll have to. He went to the dogs. Yeah, he Aaron, Aaron succumbed to the Ramsey's dogs. Um, so the 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 structure of this uh, sh show is we're going to do seven questions leading into season seven, um, and we're just going to start right into it with question number one. All right, so uh, season six, there was a whole lot of different things that happened. We had, uh, well, Cersei kind of taking down the High Sparrow and all of uh, like, her the entire building. Yeah. Um, we had Arya and the No uh, becoming becoming no one, but also not becoming no one. Um, yeah, I, I guess 
what stands out to you as some of your favorite moments from this season? Favorite moment for me, and I'm sorry to take everybody. Um, yeah. Anyways, favorite moment for me was uh, my favorite character in all of Game of Thrones is the Hound. And when he showed up, showed back up, I was like, yes. I love that moment when he they reintroduced his story. I think he's the most complex character of Game of Thrones. And I think um, he's the most, the one that's thinking the most. You know I mean the one more, more true than anybody else? And I, I really love that character, and I loved how they're setting him up to like be this um, good uh, character that um, I think is gonna good. I, well, yeah, he's a good character. I think he's a good character to begin with. That's all. That's how I took him. You know, but from he, the beginning, you thought. That? <laughs> Yes, I think yes. we have different definitions. Well, of no, character. I think he was good, but, but he, he, but he, he was most conflicted. He's a, conflicted is the best. He's a very yeah. Darth Vader kind of character. I think Darth Vader's kind of like he's at least thing. an anti-hero archetype. Yeah, I mean, but I liked him because he's the most. He's actually he's got a bigger conscience than most people sure. on the show. Well, he had a very he had one of the more interesting episodes, like kind of Ian McShane in like three scenes, yeah, like all tell, of a sudden, you know. Tell <laughs> this, tell this hound is good though to the parents of the butcher's boy. That well, he runs down on the horse and kills. The whole reason why he's on Arya's list. Shit happens. <laughs> you know? Uh, I think w- why he is good is because... Like, why he's interesting to me and why he's good because he knows what he did was a bad thing. Mm. He's not mindless to it. He's just so used to this world of butchery and killing people of, you know, for... for with no feelings, like it was in the promo, you mm-hmm. know. But he has no pretense of honor, though, either, right? No, he doesn't. He's like, "This is who I am. This is what I'm gonna do. I feel bad about it, but this is what I had to do." You so, mean? Brandon, what is your favorite? Uh, for me, this in season six, in probably season six, the, yeah. One of my there's a, obviously there's a lot. Season six, I think, was the best season of the entire show. So there's a lot to pick from. But if I had to pick just one, which I do, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I would go with the Hodor story. Being able to kind of see. What exactly, the, giving the background, the origin story, if you will, on Hodor, mm-hmm. um, it's a very tragic story, and the way yeah. it was told, I thought was really moving, and that's one of my, even though there's arguments to be made on for maybe the, the last couple of episodes, to me, the Hodor episode was the one that really stood out to me that I, I really enjoyed. I liked getting resolution on it, that was also mixed in, obviously, with the attack on the Three-Eyed Raven's domain mm-hmm. by the Night's King, and so that was just, there was a lot going on there, and I thought it was really well told. Mm-hmm. And you had that, like, you were saying that we were watching the finale right before we started recording, and, like, the death of, uh, oh, shoot, what's the son that died? Rickon. Like, yes. he gets hit by the air, it's like, oh, whatever, that, I don't really care. But when you saw... Uh, yeah, Young Willis, which was Hodor's name yeah. before he named Hodor, that, that scene to me was a lot more moving because it was much more tragic, I think, where... And, and nothing against the, the the young actor that played Rickon, but I just I was really moved by the whole the way he was, he was very he was innocent. Him. Willis was an innocent who was put. He was not part of a, a wealthy family. He was not part of a, yeah. a noble house. Mm-hmm. Yet he, you could in, in some ways he was pulled into this by what Bran, by Bran's decisions yeah. really. Yeah. Uh, which we'll actually get back to. We'll, later we'll circle back to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, did you did you think that when they when when he starts saying Hodor Hodor Hodor, did, did you wish they put the line? What are you talking about, Willis? Nope. No, you didn't wish that at all. <laughs> all right. That's how it transitions. Right. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say quickly, my my favorite, uh, it wasn't really a scene or a, like a moment or anything. It's more just sort of the the progression of, or really the the, the through line of, San, of Sansa and Ramsay Bolton. Like the how she escaped at the end of uh, season five, right? Mm-hmm. And seeing her sort of, did season you wonder five, if she died from that, se- that jump? Well, yeah. not really, actually. But, like, season five sort of was her, like, awakening to, like, how, like, the severity of this world. But then season six showed her transformation into, like, a, like, she's understanding, like, how manipulative people are. And she's sort of taking on more of, like, a leadership thing. And that's, how to use that agency. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. she's, like, I liked her development throughout the season, but also in contrast to what Ramsey was doing and her past relationship to him and then seeing her get that full closure with the dog scene was like a perfect ending other than and the I mean, little yeah. slight smile she gives as she's walking towards right. the camera right and so she gets it so all right question 2 I'll try, I'll try.
All right, so uh, I'm the one that prepared all these graphics, so you could probably see. <laughs> there's probably a hint Fix why. That. <laughs> well, Efforts. there's a hint about what my uh, thoughts might be for this one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start. Uh, so Arya is probably my favorite non-Tyrion character <laughs> in the show, um, but like what they did with her in the her training and i don't know it felt like everything was very um like they were setting her up to become like an awesome badass but a lot of her like fight scenes felt very like accidental or luck based and then her decision making um with regards to like okay you have to go kill uh that actress Mm -hmm. um lady crane lady crane right and like it kind of shows that she has a heart in certain circumstances, but like the way they frame it was like, yeah, she's a pretty good actress, so I'm not going to kill her. It wasn't oh, wow. like you're a good per necessarily a good person, not entirely. Um, but then it, just like every the scenes that she was in were, I guess not as like she gets beat up as a blind person, then like all of a sudden like she can block it, it and then. The scenes with the it was like it's like, first, it was like first blood. You ever seen the movie First Blood? No, I haven't. It's with uh, John Claude Van Damme where he like gets he gets like sand thrown in his eye at the end. No, it's Bloodsport. Excuse me, Bloodsport. Blood blood. blood. <laughs> excuse me, Bloodsport. Excuse me, mm-hmm. Bloodsport. Like he fights the bad guy with like you yeah. Know, so he just learns how to be. He learns how to just adapt. Well, so and I thought, the light at the end. And, and, yeah, and I guess that it was a decent payoff. I suppose, but it felt like she, you know, she gets stabbed a million times and like, it's just okay. And they, they kind of used her storyline as an excuse to just like, like nudge, nudge fan service. This is, we're doing a play. It's all meta. We're doing a play of the uh, the show we're doing. And it's, you know, and I don't know. I just didn't feel like it was as strong as I hoped it would be for one of my favorite characters. Yeah. I didn't like that. I didn't like that, that, uh, face man, the faceless man part. That's my least favorite part of the season. There was a lot of faceless men. What, well, it's just that storyline. I didn't like that storyline. But I have another one. But you go ahead and tell yours because I'm not. I, I have nothing to, to provide for this podcast. Really. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I, I would agree with Matt. My my least favorite part when I think about season six, the thing that comes to mind most, and it's not just the storyline as far as Arya. It's actually it's specifically they're trying to figure out a way narratively to get her out of Bravos yeah, and back to Westeros. Kind of rushed. So the the waif stabbing her so many times, it was a brutal gut stabbing with even a knife twist in there. There's I, I found it very unbelievable that she would have survived those wounds without some type of, you know, magical so interference. Yeah, exactly. Which was not I didn't I don't feel like it was paid off in the It was story. roughly written, right. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it just feel it, it felt overkill. Like if they'd made it like one stab maybe, even then it would have been uh, Kind of brutal because she's a two, you know. But the, they there was like two or three stabs, and then there was the, the, the specific. There was even a specific knife twist. Well, isn't did, didn't George R. R. Martin's wife says like, I, I disown you, George, if you killed off Arya because that's her favorite character. I think there there was a line about that. <laughs> you know? So yeah, there I, I have read that as well. Yeah. So well, she's say she's my favorite. She's one. She is probably my favorite character that actually is not. One thing I will counterpoint there with you, just to Go disagree a little yeah. bit, the part of it with her not wanting to kill Lady Crane, mm-hmm. if you really care about Arya, she, you know, you, we obviously have seen her since she was kind of a, a tomboyish girl mm-hmm. growing up. When she, like, when she attacked uh, Sir Marin and, like, stabbed out his eye, she had almost become feral, right? She's yeah. just a, a, a tool for vengeance and that alone. One saving um, grace about the Lady Crane was showing that she isn't just a tool for yeah. vengeance. She does still have a code. Now, granted, they're playing both sides of the fence with like how sadistically she's smiling at Lord Frey when she yeah. does him. But there are at least pieces where you can say she's not just going to kill without a code. She has a code still. Well, and I also thought it was weird. Like I felt like they could have played up the fact that they're actors and like she, by putting on these, ma- like part of her training is she's adapting to these masks and playing roles and stuff and like everybody else in the show is kind of playing roles and being manipulative. I thought they could have played up that a little mm-hmm. bit more overtly, I guess. My, but, one, my one thing is this. Is, is, is two things. It's with the giant at the end. What's his name, the giant? One one. One one. one, one. Okay, one. I did not like seeing R. the guy. He's my favorite. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah. He's, I, I love that character. <laughs> yeah. Capital letters. I love that character. I love that giant. But the two things is like, they didn't, like, 
he was kind of pathetic at the end of that Battle of the Bastards. Like, he could have had a tree and started whacking people, or, like, he could have done more. He could have, he could have did, like, a, a somersault and, like, killed everybody. But that's my one you major You'd like to see the giant have his own unique special moves. Yeah, but they did, they did focus on him. That's That's my one plot point I didn't like. Okay. Uh, just to point out a couple, Nyx says that the Daenerys storyline was his favorite. Uh, I actually kind of disagree with that. I did like. The, I thought it was just an excuse. I guess it was to like uh, show she's taking over the Duff yeah, Rack. But, but I, felt, I, I like that. I like that. We'll get, I can we'll get the firing to throw this on. Yeah, but he, and he didn't like Marine without her. Like the stuff with Tyrion sure. and stuff. Yeah, kind of I can bit. see that. I, I think the payoff in the end makes up for any Daenerys thing, so it's it's hard not to get excited about it just because sure. she's been spinning her wheels since literally season one in uh, Esteros for her to finally be heading back. It's like. Okay, all's forgiven. Let's just look forward. Yeah. All right. Question three. <laughs> all right. So this. <laughs> just, I was just seeing that for the first time. By the way, that's great. <laughs> so this is. Um, this is our bookworm segment for Bryn, who's read the books, to sort of point out a couple things, uh, theories that I guess are more like at this point uh, out in the ether of people who have speculated about them, but they a lot of them sort of reference the books, which we Ben and I wouldn't be super familiar with. So we're going to go through a couple here. Um, and the first one... Why is the Star Trek character in Game of Thrones? That's 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 the, a, that's that's the first time use, travel, of course. Use space time. Yeah. Uh, no, one of the things that I, I specifically was calling out to Matt when we were kind of talking about differences from the book is the Dorn storylines. First of all, for the most part, I really actually like the changes that they've made from the from the books. I feel like they've condensed the story, and made it a lot more <laughs> adaptable. <laughs> Throwing shades on the night. Nice. They made it a lot work for television a lot better. However, some of the stories have got the short shift, and it's really very apparent. The Dorn ones is a great example. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in the show, the Dorn Martell is essentially kind of a weak leader. Um, Alaria is really upset that he doesn't avenge his brother's death at the, the, the Viper at the hands of the mountain, and right. so they end up killing him. Mm -hmm. In the books, he is playing possum. He's never actually been a true loyalist to the crown. Right. Uh, he's actually still mad, as mad as his brother was at the death of his sister mm -hmm. at the hands of the mountain. Only he's a lot more political about it. So he's you know kind of making maneuverings, but he's not being overt like like uh, Oberyn was. So some of the things he had a pact, for example, to marry off his daughter Arianne to uh, Viserys. Who was Danny's brother before mm -hmm. he got the little pot of melted melt gold, gold poured yeah. on him? Mm -hmm. So they there was a, a pact that they had to marry those two to join their houses. That was one that came up. Um, after he learned about his death, he then sent his son Quentin, who's also not in the show. We only saw Tristane, but he sent his son Qu Quentin across the the narrow sea in an attempt. To, the the p purpose of his trip was to marry Daenerys and to again. Solidify that yeah, like a houses. serious like character. So like, he keeps he's, following yeah. up on it, right? And it, side note, um, he does meet up with Daenerys and tells her that she basically finds it interesting, but she rebuffs him and basically <laughs> says that she's going to still marry his daughter so she can solve marine problems. He then goes underneath to let the dragons out and get toasted alive. So he's okay. killed off. That's one. So he doesn't just like sit in a chair for four he seasons. He absolutely <laughs> doesn't sit in a chair. Right? Well, he does have a chair. He still and has just, like, doubt. That aspect is still, but he's not passive and meek like he's mm. played out to be. Was uh, we'll, we'll go a little longer. Sure. Is Oberyn as um, is he the same kind of character in the yes. books? Okay. O Oberyn is very much like he was played in the show. He's a very exciting character. I'll say this as a book reader. You're like. Okay, there's this other person who's going to pick up. This is the anti Lannister, right? We can kind of root for him. So his death at the hand of the mountain was just like, was as shocking almost mm -hmm. as a reader as it was as a, a watcher because he's like someone who was really cool, looked to have everything on his side. He was going to fight for Tyrion and get him out. And then everything kind of fell apart there. Yeah. And the, the, just like in the that. show, he's that. winning the fight, right? Yeah. It looks like he's going to do it. He said, dude, just kill it. Kill it. Yeah. It's like, is that the good, the bad, and the ugly? Yeah. Just shoot, don't talk. You know, like, you know, like, you know, like he's talking, like, you in the bathtub and shoot, shoots him. So, yeah. Ready for number two? Sure. All right, That's so number two. Let's talk about this one. This theory uh, yeah. has been floating around quite, or you you pointed out to me, and then I was like, oh, I, when I was preparing these, I was like, oh, this is everywhere. 
So care to explain the, the brand, all brand theory? Sure. So the all brand theory basically goes that as we saw in the, in the Hodor episode where Bran traveled, essentially went back in time in his visions and by interacting and taking control of Hodor in the past, while at the same time he had control of him in the future, it created this rift, right? Which ended up breaking Willis's mind, yeah, essentially. Yeah, it was a paradox. It was a paradox that became kind of a self-fulfilling thing. So a lot of people have taken that theory-wise and ran with it and suggested that some of the famous Brandons in the history of the Starks, like Bran the Builder mm -hmm. was a Brandon Stark. There was also so a... The, who the actually... Wall. Sorry, yeah. yes, thank the you. Wall. Bran the Builder, yeah. who was responsible for building the wall to protect the kingdom from the uh, from the north. There's also a Bran the Breaker who, in the in the history who defeated the first who defeated the Night King and his corpse bride because at one point the Night King had total control. Now the fact that you said corpse bride, I'm only thinking yeah, Timber. There's a lot of stories. <laughs> That's it. We'll save that one for a future episode because yeah. I know the Night King is going to continue to play, to play in future right. episodes. So I think maybe be in the future we can take a trip back and oh, talk yeah, about sure. some of the history in the Night King. Yeah. Uh, they definitely diverted in the books, made it a lot simpler, which again, I think usually is good. I think they're making good decisions with a lot of that. Yeah. So, I, oh, and then, then another ad, additional thing on the brand that's kind of linked into with that is there's a lot of th thing about the Mad King, right. uh, Ares, mm -hmm. who went mad and, and wanted to burn everything. There is some theories that say that Bran goes back in time and tries to convince him not to burn everything to to essentially is, oh, is yeah. a, and actually causes him to go crazy go insane. right so i heard about that yeah there's there's some well, so, there. and when and again for the record these aren't theories personally i believe in sure. they're interesting to talk about there are because brand caused everything it's like it's like tony stark so in, in, in well, avengers he's the problem to why all the villains are in when, <laughs> once you break the paradox and you introduce time travel though it's Katie bar the door on all these yeah. theories, right? Yeah. It's Superman the movie. It's like well, the the one the what what lends itself, and I guess like the idea is that you know some other parts is is Brand the promised prince that the Lord of what you know mm -hmm. they keep referencing is going to show up, um, and the re and or is he the Lord of Light at all? Because uh, all of these like the Red Woman oh, is sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. the Red Woman is like supposedly seeing or hearing things and Bran has shown that he can communicate uh, like through time I guess and so who are they hearing like who Absolutely. are they interacting with Absolutely. and it there's could a, be him like his action there's yeah. also talk that I mean Brandon is the three-eyed raven which right. that one's more heavily influenced in the book like so the three-eyed raven basically says so you he's talking to the older, older self that that's part of the theories, right? Is that's that Brandon is essentially always the three eyed raven. Oh, okay, that's so he's always. Been. So I have a question. That's, that's one of the theories. How did uh, in, in, in this season six when he um, went and saw went by himself to grab the the root, went by himself to mm -hmm. see the uh, the Night King? How did the Night King? How did they know he's there? So again, part of the part, I don't know that it's explicit. Keep in mind this is beyond where the books yet, hit, yeah. right? So. What is essentially thought is is that when Bran went to see him, because Bran has some special powers but is not really trained on how to use it well yet, he was vulnerable and the Night's King became aware of his presence. And by grabbing him, you'll notice they become him, linked. Not only did they become linked, but he grabbed him and there's actually marks on Bran's arm, even though he yeah. obviously wasn't there physically. Right. He physically bears the marks of the Night's King. Yeah. The theory is, is that that mark is what breaks the seal. Because of that mark is why the Night's King was able to invade the yes, Three-Eyed yes. domain. That some people believe that same mark, if Bran goes south of the wall, will negate the magic properties of the wall. Again, these are all theories and conjecture mm. of people's. But the thing is, is whatever magic protection that they... Because, again, when they first arrived at the Three End Raven, they talked about how, don't worry. Remember the skeletons out front? Yeah. They yeah. said, don't worry. You're Once you're in here, you're safe. Bran broke that yeah, when he, he, when he, he made that through. mistake. Mm -hmm. The question is, is how much more will break if he goes to the other side of the wall? Interesting. So do you think Bran will... Uh, Take control of one of the dragons. That a lot of people wonder kept talking about how don't when we word does he'll fly. Yeah. But That's I want to say in the trailers they show him taking what appeared to show him taking control of like a flock of a murder of crows oh. or, or ravens. And I you also get a re, you also get a no, it's a murder. You also get a reaction from the Night King. He like looks up and is again aware of his presence, right? So there's definitely hints that either A, Bran's not still fully in control of his powers, or B, even if he is, the Night King's strong enough that he's not he's not he's not hidden from sight. Do you feel that the uh, um, how they explain the Night King's origin? Was like, oh wait, oh wait, 
<laughs> you know, like in last season, like oh, you know the uh, the what like what leaf were the, and the yeah, they created the, it's like oh that's the Lion King. They, they revealed a lot last season. You feel like oh, I wish they would have saved that or. No, or, no, we got thirteen episodes left, folks. Yeah, yeah you're right. The powder, we'll you know, the powder is dry enough. Do you, do, so, do you think they, they, they kind of, it was kind of like here's the rug? Of, oh shit! It wasn't There's a lot of allegory you can pull out, but I do like the idea that the Night's King was created to defend themselves against man, and it got out of control. Right? Mm-hmm. The children mm-hmm. of the forest created the Night's King to fight the war against man, mm-hmm. and now. What, what it, we believe possibly, we don't have any reason not to believe that the children of the forest are now no more because of their creation. That they, yeah. you know, you could make the allegory to nuclear weapons or whatever. You know, you created yeah. something that you now can't control. It's a cool idea. Yeah. It's very cool idea. It's also a story that's told time and more. Right? Mm-hmm. That's not a new tale. Well, it's, 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 it's the hero's yeah. journey. It's, yes. it's, it's, it's well, mythology. Yes, you know I, mean? yeah. like, I don't know if it's kind of well. It's not the hero's journey to say, but like, there's so much uh, great storytelling. You know, at this point, you know. Everything's been done. So if you borrow yeah. things, everything's already nice. Well, it's like if you borrow things, like the Star Wars is all the hero's journey. You mean you borrow, borrow from mythology and stuff, like, and you make it your own. I think that's yeah. it's, it's great. It's great. It's a very it's a paradox that we all, you know, uh, seem to gravitate towards as human beings. You know, it's interesting. I'm sure, uh, he's been influenced by quite well, a few. It's uh, good storytelling. He's clearly rolling, influenced by he's quite a few money well, it's funny, predecessors. George, George yeah. R. R. Martin's actually talked about how he didn't like in Lord of the Rings when Gandalf comes back. He comes back as Gandalf the White, and he's now more powerful, and he's he's kind of pristine. Mm-hmm. He's talked about how when he brings someone back, and then really he's talking about in the context of some of the specific Snow. things. Yeah, actually, Lady Stoneheart, but we'll get there later. Yeah, but he talks <laughs> about how in in his mind, you come back from the dead, you're not. Things have not got better. Yeah, that's what's interesting about this series. It's not. It's what well, what was interesting thing to me about uh, season six in terms of that kind of um, rationale is um, how when Jon Snow came back, it was there's nothing like death. There's oh nothing. that comment, you know how much it freaks Lady like, Frick Sandra yeah. out is kind of funny. Just I also think it's interesting. We can get again another. It's dark. It's more, a darker yeah. tone, but. His wounds didn't like magically heal, right? No, just... he's back, but he is still wounded. He's he is not. Time. He is not pristine. No, no, no. I, I think I that. think they could probably play that more. Maybe we'll see that this season. But I, I appreciate about George R. R. Martin. But his, well, his argument that if you come back from the dead, there's going to be prices to pay. We're not seeing that really very no, well yet. in Jon Snow yet. And it's kind of cool. I, I haven't seen it with, yeah, with uh, Barrick. Or, oh, we've definitely seen it. He, he's he's I mean, that he's, guy. He's, he's missing an eye. Right, he's, but they're not like they're not necessarily impacting him as but like actually severe you, like or are they i don't know well there's a comment he specifically makes that when he comes back he's a little less that's he actually true. makes a comment that's that true. he feels he like did, he's he less himself yeah. so there is some price i don't think in the show we've seen the price that we've john has other than the fact that he kind of wishes he was over it but i, I i'm curious well, to see if they play into that more this we season. can't yeah. all come back from the dead so, so we <laughs> that's like one. Uh, let's do our fourth section segment. Let me pull this up here. And Brandon pointed out my typo <laughs> right away. Then we'll immediately go past it. So yeah, we'll we'll talk. Um, so no yeah they can hear us okay yeah we're talking over like we're just gonna like comment on everybody's did death did you ever crap. know that you're my hero that one's the most gruesome one if you think yeah. Yeah, Mark, yeah dogs eating a live woman or baby, a baby that doesn't get much worse than but you know that one was overdue that happened much earlier in the books they held on to it though because they wanted to help with the what is that like hook it's thing a, it's like, like a meat hook meat hook which is yeah. big slabs of meat he was a dick <laughs> he was, but he wasn't with that. Ollie, I'm sorry that you died, but you're a fucking dick too. Ollie completely made it. Uh, you know, you tried your hardest. I wish you would have killed uh, Ramsey. That was a great scene. That was, that was great a great scene. scene. That was a great scene. I did not see that. I enjoyed that scene. Believe. Uh, we don't know who the hell you are. You kind of like, you know, we. Oh, she was great. Noble I know, but at the same time, it's like, oh no, we're here. Yeah, we only have two wolves. Left. I hate animals dying. That's right. Uh, you were a different uh, three-eyed raven. <laughs> <laughs> you died twice. You died twice. 
Oh, oh Brandon, Brandon, I got uh, these for you. Tear. <laughs> yeah. Ian McShane. Ian We wish you would more. Cash that paycheck. Welcome yeah. to Deadwood. Yeah, Deadwood. Mrs. Stranger. Oh, uh, the Blackfish is great. Yeah, you're great. You're you're like a good scarfman. These guys, I this surprised me. Douchebag McGee. Because it's like, yeah, Lady Crane. Nah, yeah, I didn't care about you that much. But I don't like actors dying. Yeah, you're a bitch. You're a bitch. I didn't like the waif. Yeah. You just too by the rules. For a long time, I thought the waif and the I love the same. I love the same. I love that the masters died, but he bowed and like they killed the two guys. Yeah, zigzag, buddy. Zigzag. Oh, one one. Oh, I hate that. Guy. You should use a big tree. Yeah, that they will pay off his great on that. Uh, he's in Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah, he is. The last one, uh, not the last one. Not the last. One, the last good one. The last good one. Yeah, you're a bitch. <laughs> Oh, it's Kevin. 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 Kevin, you're such a disease. <laughs> Actually shot by various in the books. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, the horse sorry. really had a tumble. It didn't matter, though, because they all died. Yeah. Yeah, you had, you had the right idea with the stupid sparrow part two of Nice. Same. Same here. Weren't you in Star Wars? Like, episode one? Oh, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, Evita, you are great in that. <laughs> this was I love this scene. He's actually died on the show twice. What? Oh! He was another character. He was playing another character and then they pulled him in. Oh, the really? I love him in Harry Potter. The Karch Stark that goes in there and kills the two boys that were cousins of the Lannisters in re- revenge for the <laughs> <and> <laughs> That's Lannister. hilarious. I love me, Pius. Good old sweet Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you, remember, you remember the one that Rob killed? The car shark that Rob chopped his head off and like, that was like, like, warned him? Mm-hmm. He had killed two boys that were Lannister cousins, essentially, that they had in jail because uh, of, because uh, Kat, Caitlin had let Jamie go. One of the boys was played by the actor who then come back and played Tom. The interesting. Boy. That is interesting. You go back and watch it. It's really interesting to okay. see him in the jail cell. Before we get started, uh, Matt, great job for... Uh, all this together. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, this is really cool. All right. Now, with all our season six talk, well, I guess we kind of started with the, the brand stuff. Let's get into season six. Try, try, try. So, season seven. <clears throat> uh, I felt like uh, season six kind of set us up with like, here are our buckets of allegiances, basically, of like who's all aligned, and now we're going to collide. We're identifying uh, where the pieces on the board are. Right now, we're going to see the resolution. Let's send them, and yeah. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but it seems like the we've got Daenerys going straight to Westeros, and she's going to square off with Cersei. Uh, potentially, yeah. I guess that's how I'm interpreting it. Well, but, they, I, I'll just throw out there. The hint at the end of the last season was that she's already picked up key alliances, the Martells right. in Dorne. Well, not the Martells anymore, I guess, but Dorne is going to align with her, and the Tyrells. Yeah. Uh, both of them want nothing but vengeance. The only thing they want to do is well, see Cersei the, suffer, yeah. which is great for Daenerys because that, there's no, they're not trying to compete with her power. Right. And, they just want to see her succeed. And the Iron Islands. You have she's the got iron, the well, Greyjoy. You don't have the Iron Islands. She's right? got the well, ships. Half of them. And you have half. I don't know if it's half or not. But how many ships did they steal? They can't say half. half. They can't say he half. makes a reference to building yeah. a thousand They're ships. They're going to build more. Yeah. I mean, yeah. they got some of them. Oh, uh, man. This is like. This is like I don't think bathroom. I would count them as Iron Islands. This is like 24 bathrooms. You have at least a dissident Iron Islands. But she's got the. Ireland? She's got the Unsullied. She's got the Dothraki. She's got the dragons. She's got. Tyrion and Barriss. She'll get John Snow. She's got, She'll get John Snow. You said it, but the most important thing she has, the nukes in this world. Right, exactly. Dragons, right? We're going to get to that. We're gonna, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> the one of my two the most nukes. interesting things for this season is uh, they need to show the dragon vulnerability. Like some, yeah. They have to show it. Otherwise, there's no real... Con- like She's, all, she's no, almost she, too yeah. invincible. If this yeah. was a video game, you'd be saying that Danny needs to be nerfed. <laughs> She's got too much power. There's no question. But so I think that that's a really interesting thread. But I guess the way I'm seeing it is the way the season might go is like she's colliding right in with search like right away. 
whereas John and is more focused on the White Walkers. Yeah, I mean, and from Danny's point of view, we don't know that she's even aware of the White Walkers. Right. right. No, so she's the not. bigger concern, the actual important battle, instead of all this war over is the White Walkers, is the one that John's aware of. Mm-hmm. That. I mean, we, we've some messages have been sent down south, but they've pretty much been ignored as far as Cersei and as far as yeah, nobody's you know, nobody else ignored. has been thinking about it, and they've been on the continent. Right. At least uh, Danny has an excuse; she hasn't even been on that continent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I and I'll be interested to see the other. My other big thing was all of the potential for uh, people reuniting, <laughs> like the the potential of like. All the Starks getting back together. Sure, and that all was the... really powerful last year, right? right. We saw Sansa and John, yeah. just those two, and they didn't even get along or actually have a scene together. Right. I was going to say yeah. that. Damn it! Sorry. That's my that's my nugget. For my one nugget. You're go ahead. ahead. You're done. I'm done. I'm in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I could see like Jamie potentially um, seeing Tyrion or Tyrion seeing uh, Bronn again. Uh, um, Bronze had a great scene in the boys. I guess he was the Brienne and ja- uh, Jamie, uh, the Hound and the Mountain. Yeah, that's what we've, I'm got for. P- we've got pieces, right? right. Arya and, and Jamie, the Hound. We got to see a small scene. Yeah, we got to true. see Bron and Pod, which was a hint towards Bron and right. Tyrion. Yeah. So, so I, I don't know. I think there's a lot of potential for some of these, like for sure, b- uh, developing sort of when people are separated and then seeing when they come back together, what's new. Arya, yeah. the yeah. Arya reunited, reunited. reunited. Reunite. What is Reuniting? Reunification. Re- reunification, excuse me. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, 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 today, Junior, um, will be great with Sansa and this, John. The remaining Starks family reunion. That'll work. <laughs> so, today, do you want, want to shift into other things that we're interested in? Yeah, yeah. You can just keep going. I, for one, what definitely else? the number one thing is the, the Daenerys plot line simply yeah. because that's one that's been hinted since the end of the first books when she got these dragons and you're like okay she you know she's got this and then she went and like has been spinning her wheels in marine for five seasons mm-hmm. i mean it's just been from a book reader perspective now it's matter time. Fact, there's a, actually something called the Miranese knot which is talking about how she's basically got herself tied into these different plot threads in marine and it, it slowed down the story and I think George R. R. Martin's even talked about how he felt like he needed to slow something down because the dragons needed to grow up. Yeah. And because they were babies. And it's just, it's, we've been waiting for her to get into Westeros and do this stuff for a while. Another one that I think that's big me, I want to see where things go with Bran, right? So yeah. Bran had the vision about John. So we now ostensibly know that he knows about John's true lineage. Mm-hmm. How's that going to get communicated down? How, you assume yeah. there's going to be some type of reunification there, but yeah. how's that going to play out? I'm, I'm interested to see where that goes. Yeah, I I have such a blind spot for anything that could happen with Bran. Like I just have no and like I almost like anything's on. I have no idea where it could, because almost anything could happen. And that's great. Like, he, you know? he met with what's his name, uh, Benjamin. You know his, his Benjamin came right and start. saved him. Yeah. Um, the only thing we've seen in the trailer, for example, is that we see uh, him and uh, Mira at the wall. It looks like they're getting ready to come back through the wall. So. Um. And later on, we also see him in a wheelchair, which he would not have had up on the wall. So he's, you have reason to believe that he makes it south because he's had some people. Oh, it's a preview? Like, there's a wheelchair? There's him in a wheelchair. Maybe I'm getting into too much. I hope that's oh not Oh, my easy. God. It's the trailer. I got to Oh, no. Jeez. If you're watching or listening. I can't wait. Podcast, I can't yeah. wait to do the episode. So you guys got to have to stick in after this podcast to talk, see our reaction. Um. Yeah, I, I think it'll be interesting. I think there's like... I don't know again like i frame this as i see two fronts almost and then it will almost assuredly converge at some point like it'll merge back together and like the the logical conclusion or the logical thought would be seeing is really the question it's not really a question of if it's more of a question of when cersei and the lannisters are like they're just out of westeros finally like i feel like that's almost a matter of if than when but that's my opinion yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. There. We'll, we'll have to maybe answer how that happens in the bold prediction section. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, all right. No, all right. No. All right. That's not my prediction. I'm okay. Saying, okay. 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 Yeah. I, I have a prediction about that. Okay. You have a prediction about everybody, so everybody's. I do. Leave the letters to me. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll get there. You can pay their debts. So okay. let's get to <laughs> question six. Okay, 
So, we're going to play a game. And that game is the right. Game of Thrones Season 7 Death Pool. It's like a hype for Death Pool. Yes. <laughs> I should have put like Deadpool somewhere on here. That would have been funny. So, kind of what we're going to do is we're going to pick three characters each to uh, carry through for the whole season that we think are going to die this season. And we're doing a snake draft, right? You start yeah. first. So, and it's going to be a snake draft. But. When you pick somebody, you assign them a point value. So if okay, you pick somebody so kind of, you, if, that you really think is going to die over somebody who's not, you would put them a five as okay. opposed to a one. Okay, okay. Um, I'm going to let you go first, Ben. No, no, no. No? Okay, I'll go first. Yeah, you go first. Littlefinger, five. I think Littlefinger's going to die um, royally in this. Uh, Maybe at the explain. end of the season. I think somehow... Sansa's gonna do it. Somehow Sansa's gonna be involved with Littlefinger's death because she knows more than anybody how despicable he she is. She still has the dogs. Mm -hmm. That was not that was not <laughs> a bullet expended, right? She still no, has the but I, I think I think as a main character, I think he's probable of dying. Okay. I really do. All right, Brandon. I can do wrong. All right, for my first pick, I'm going to pick Olena Tyrell. I think. Uh, that's for my number one, not number five. Uh, did I pit, put her on there? Oh, is it supposed to be in the middle? Yeah, she is. I'm she is from the wrong group. Yeah, Sorry. she is not on the table. If you would go ahead and pick next, I'll okay, go ahead and just start. Um, I am going to pick uh, one of the dragons is going to die, and I'm going to put that oh. as my number five. Because I think it this season, if a dra one of the three dragons doesn't die, then it, right. it's almost like That's it's not even a surprise later That's on bullshit. when you're colliding. So I hate you, man. why? That's a good pick. Well, it's a good pick. <laughs> I hate you. Beat us in poker. Yeah. All right. Ahead, I would. Man. I'll then flip back, and my number one pick would be uh, Lady <laughs> Melisandre. I think uh, Davos made a very clear threat if he sees her again. Mm hmm. Number. My number one. One. Okay. Is it my turn? Again? Davos. Yeah. So yeah, that's right. That threat was on the table. So John sure. made an implied threat, and then Davos like made an explicit one, yeah. saying, "You know, I, I will." Well, I can John make making a threat to her when he gave give her back to life. Anyways, this is. I'll go pick mine. No, no, you don't get to go. Brandon gets to go again. Oh yes, this is serpentine. This is the. Sand Viper draft. All right, so oh, bitch. Why'd you? I'll admit, a little bit of me is thinking. Thinking about what characters may have uh -huh. been used up as far as their usefulness. So, uh -huh. my number two pick, Alaria Sand, Oberyn's uh, paramour. And why do you? What do you think about her? Uh, as I kind of alluded to, I, I think storyline wise, she's all out for vengeance. She's took out the uh, the uh, Martells, mm -hmm. right? She's basically assassinated the family of Dorne, and I think uh, there's eventually. I think story-wise, I think there's a price to pay when you're burning for vengeance and that's your only thing. And sure. She seems to also have no code. She didn't care about assassinating Marcella. She didn't care about who who dies or who gets uh, in her way. So so for my number one, I'm going to go... No, it's a snake. You know what the snake is, right? I thought you went... For, yeah, but we went oh, out of order. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm going to go with <laughs> the, uh, the low, the easy one, I think. Or at least in my opinion, no. it's easy. And that's... Jora. Okay, oh, uh, okay, I'm all right. Because he already has sort of like a set timetable, and I don't. I mean, unless he's just magically healed, I also could see even if he is magically healed, it seems like this is the type of universe that will punish him anyway and like take him out uh, regardless. So fair. <sighs> Two seasons left. Let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna say it. I'm right number three. Uh, three points. Okay. Uh, Cersei. Cersei's gonna die, and I have a reason for that uh, later. That'll come later? That'll come later. Okay. Who's your, uh, yeah, I guess if you're picking Cersei to die this season, that's probably a bold prediction. It is a bold prediction. Um, okay, who's your last one? What, is it thought it was a snake? It is, right. and you just want so to you go again, because you're at the end of the tale. Okay, okay, uh, 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 the mountain. Oh, the mountain. Damn it. Yeah, he took mine. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he because he dies first, then Cersei. See what I'm saying? I guess you, if you're predicting Cersei dying, you'd almost have to predict the mountain. Yeah, mountain dying. Exactly. Um, 
I actually I was going to pick the mountain uh, just because I think from a just from my personal standpoint sure. I hope that the dragon uh, the dragon dies because <laughs> no, the no, mountain. no 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 <laughs> no 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 just want that the hound's going to be the hound's going to be the hound's going to be the mountain I'm, 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 I'm guaranteed. you're picking okay yeah, you get revenge on him for taking your mountain pick you should probably pick his favorite character I should no uh, no the hound's not dying the hound's oh, not dying yeah. I'm gonna pick. Uh, if the mountains did, the hound had no purpose. See, I'm all about purpose. I'm gonna pick uh, a new, a, a new face at the end of the season, who I think is for sure. Yeah, yeah, you're, that's, yeah, you're, you're in great joy. You, yeah. you're safe. You, I'm a, you, I'm you're safe. I'm, I'm, I'm bold. I'm, I've been here before. You all right, poker, so. all right. For last my, one for my last pick, and this here's the winner, right? So I've got a theme with all my picks, and that is. He's read the book. You read the book. I do. <laughs> if you look at it, it's people who have done bad and are it's, they're just desserts. They're going to be being, putting out of misery. I'm sorry, Theon Greyjoy, but saving Sansa was not enough to redeem you. You still have you some plot vengeance wow. headed for you. So he's my number one. You're pick. going with Theon. Theon dies this season. Uh, sorry, maybe. That I don't know. I, I actually I thought about that, but I feel like he, he's actually one of the more complicated characters. Oh sure. To absolutely. then have him, I guess this could be his time again. To the point of me with Jor, like even if he's like rehabilitated himself, like it would be the time to just up your. Dad. I can make <laughs> multiple arguments for this. The one in specific reference to what you just said, though, how how interesting you're going to be if he keeps swinging back and forth between that that emotional arc, right? We, we've went a full circle with him. I think his time has come. Okay. <laughs> all right. Speak. Uh, so, those are all actually pretty safe picks, I, I, other than Ben's. Ben's yours are bold. bold. <laughs> they are bold. Uh, let's go even bolder. Uh oh. I'm getting good at these transitions. You are. With our last question. Do you like that's not my bold prediction? I just thought it was funny. That's good. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> if the hound becomes the, the, the I would king, love the person that <laughs> takes the throne. I am gonna go last because mine is mine is a little. Uh, I'll go first in-depth. because I have nothing to like to provide for this. So mine could be either season seven or season eight in terms of prediction, and could also uh, come up the heels of my prediction of death too. Uh, I believe that Cersei will be. Killed by Jane for the same reasons because she, she did. The King Slayer becomes the Queen Slayer. He becomes the Queen Slayer because of the exact same reason of why he killed the king uh, for using the um, what's that? What's that green dynamite? Black black fire? Wildfire. 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 Excuse me. Mm-hmm. For using wildfire uh, to kill out the kingdom. He comes back. Look, when we see him come back in in season six. At the very end, he didn't say a word, but he's like royally pissed. Sister, bitch, you just killed everybody. You know, uh, the same reason why I killed, stabbed the king in the back. And so it's kind of a, a character arc where the person he loves the most, he'll have to do the exact same thing. Because you might actually use that strategy again at the end. You so know, he sees that she's sort of becoming the mad the queen. The mad queen. He's going to... And... You think that's his... Well, yeah. I think, I think that's my prediction. So, like, at the end, like, she's going to use more wildfire, you know, to destroy things, to destroy her own kingdom, and he's going to have to do the same thing again. Because isn't now he's the king's... Is he now the king's guard? It's still the hand. Right? The hand? The king? No, he's the hand. He's not... No, he's the king guard. Because the hand's... Oh, yeah. Different. Uh, he's the same... Position he was when um, Baratheon was king. So I think, this, or, or even the Mad King. So I think he's going to have to be placed with this, this this dilemma again to kill his own sister who he loved uh, very much. Um, I believe he was removed. Wasn't he removed from the King's Guard? Yeah, but he could be. No, he quit, right? No, he no. Because he, like he, he didn't want to leave Cersei's side, and by being in the King's he Guard, was he, was by his, King's he was removed by his, uh, the king. Tom, King Tommen, actually, I believe, because there's a scene where he's talking to Cersei and he's basically complaining that he's being sent to take care of the Blackfish, and she's like, oh, right. "Be where you're supposed to be at the head of the army." She That's guys right. gives him a speech about yeah, it because okay. he didn't want to leave town and be away from her. Interesting. So, so you, for your prediction, or for your comment at least, to be true, there he's on the King's Guard or Queen's Guard in this he's case. Be she would have had to. 
We promote him. And yeah, and I I don't know that that's a crucial. Part but of isn't it an interesting thought? Like, he, is like he, his character arc, he has to do the same thing. He's, he's given the same. I would think he would need an this extra time. motivate, potentially maybe her with going after Tyrion again or something like some other. Well, he, he fucking hates to, Tyrion because like, killing killing his his dad. Like he freed Tyrion, but like he killed. They killed their father, so I think I think it's a character art. I think it's like it's a choose. Like, what kind of man are you, Danny? And he has to kill his own sister who he's loved. Okay. Uh, same, same predicament. Right, mine's not it's not yours. quite as extravagant. Okay, but I am going to guess Gilly. We've seen Gilly, Sam, well, Sam and Gilly. Gilly through all this. My prediction has to do with Gilly. <laughs> I think <laughs> they're going super. Yeah, I'm going deep on this, right? <laughs> So she's been taught, we've seen her grow from being a complete wildling without any really knowledge of society. Uh-huh. We, she, she's basically just been a mother figure to baby Sam and, and kind of assisting with, with uh, Sam Charlie. But we have seen her learn to read. Shireen was teaching her how to read before she left Castle Black. She's been with him now, accompanying him to the old town, to the Siddles where we saw her last time. I think she's going to have a more interesting career. And my prediction is that she will... Through some type of deed of her own agency, she will save Sam's life this season. Okay, mm-hmm. that's a good. It's a, good it's a deep good. cut, sure, but that that's where yeah, I'm going. Yeah. With. That's interesting. That's interesting, and you have no more, more knowledge than we do about the situation. No, like I said, I could be, I could be season eight. So, so here's my prediction, and I haven't read anything, uh, uh, like deep about it, and or like a fan theory. So, mm-hmm. it, like you can tell, I'm. I'm obviously thinking there's uh, like a, a clear sort of progression of how the season plays out sequentially. I see uh, maybe episode four or five, uh, Cersei's ousted and Daenerys is sort of taken over. At that point, maybe uh, she teams up with John, who's at this point been fighting the White Walkers, and they go to the go to that battle, leaving mm-hmm. at some point leaving Westeros, um, and so they team up to fight the Night King. Um, I think that battle goes very poorly, and I think the end of this season leads to just utter chaos for the whole show. <laughs> okay. In that the 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 symbol for the whole show and in the title is the throne, the sure. Iron Throne, and I think the Night King is going to waltz into What's the throne this? room and destroy the throne. Like the the throne will literally be gone. I like it'll the just Night be gone. King walks in. And yes, just... he will. He will be inhabiting the throne the throne room and be I'm just saying like the siege on what like he will take the throne and to the point where the throne is irrelevant now I'm thinking that's season 8 but no I think that leads into season oh, where okay. like it's all that's chaos your final all the time. scene yes but maybe even before that here's oh, my, here's my big two. here's oh, my here's, here's the bigger prediction we haven't really seen the night king turn anybody since that little baby Right? Has he uh, actually except for the people he raised at Hard Home, right? He technically turned them into wives. Sure. So my prediction my prediction is John gets turned. <laughs> he becomes That's a good because prediction. and I say that because for a couple reasons. One is either John is gonna survive the whole show, in which case it's like you survived because you were resurrected. But like we've also gotten hints of like, if I die again, I don't don't bring me back. And so I feel like the only logical uh, resolution to that that makes like real, like have like an emotional weight to it is if he gets turned and then dies because then it seems well, more like what, what, final. Um, and it also sort of declutters a lot of other things. It allows for Sansa to kind of like, yeah. now that pairing, like Sansa can elevate a little bit. It allows Daenerys to sort of be the one to, like she's the the logical choice to then assume control. But I also think that Tyrion is the, the ultimate, he's ultimately going to be the one to, to no, I think by the time this show's over, Tyrion is going to be the last the winner. One, yeah. He's the last one. Oh, I, I think he's going to be the winner because he's got a hand in like all three areas and he's sort of like this symbol for a lot of the things that go Anyway, and that's where I think, like, oh, he's going to end with his own vineyard. And... <laughs> can, 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 can I, as long as he says it's a stupid thorn, he has thorn melted. I, have one more, I just have one more point, okay. on, and then you can comment. The, um, so we didn't even talk about the theory that uh, Tyrion could be a Targaryen. That's, like, a big yeah. theory that's come up. But now we've also revealed that Jon is a Targaryen, right? Mm-hmm. And I know it's not, like, official that Targaryens can't, 
like all Targaryens don't burn, but I feel like it's not hinted at yet. But I think it's an interesting, in addition to like, John needs to be killed to like defeat the White Walkers if he can't burn. So let me, I, I don't know. I think that's me, a funny like. <laughs> let me share a little bit of information sure. related to the burning thing. So in the books, obviously during the dragon scene where the dragons are birthed, Danny doesn't burn, and yeah. it's kind of an acknowledged thing. George R. R. Martin in interviews though has said he never intended and does not intend I know. for her to be fireproof. Yeah, and that the reason why she didn't burn there was a unique event, and I think some people have retconned that essentially the uh, witch that she mm. was burning with had cast a spell, and that was what kept her safe. Okay. In the show, though, yeah, they have sure. obviously decided that's that Danny is fireproof. That's my prediction. They, like, and they've hinted yeah. at completely. Yeah. But they they have specifically showed us that that is not true of all Targaryens. We've actually seen John burnt before. We did. He burnt his hand. There was a place. There was a time where he burnt his hand. I think when he was fighting the Whites, and we could get into that geek argument later. The Whites the, in the yeah. I think the first season mm, when the yeah. undead are brought across into the oh, Castle Black, Castle Black he yeah. burns himself then. Also, obviously. That's true. Um, okay. Uh, so the Viser- fire, when he had the melted stuff. Pouring yeah, out but I could say he could have died can another I, way. Can but... I take it back off? From your sure, permission? sure, sure. Real quick. What if Jon Snow becomes the new Night's King, but has a like has a still has his thought processes and really truly becomes the King of the he North? Could, yeah, well, that's, from the right. That's I've heard that. That's, 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 that's an idea. idea. Okay. I, that's, that, I, that's just I, I just can't even read that. Like, that's, I've heard. I've heard that and. One, one little thing. George R. R. Martin is just the only thing he said about the ending is that when he does get to it, which could be twenty years from now, the way he writes the books, if he lives that long, is that it will be bittersweet. Okay, so this you is my. Be, really all right, I feel good about life. my thought then. <laughs> well, but maybe he won't get burned, but I do think my prediction is he will get turned. And like, I also think it is going to be like I think there's going to be less main character deaths this season. Because they'll want to have the payout in season eight more so with like the ones that, that have been here a while. Deadpool. No, it doesn't. But I, I think the idea of chaos is going to be like a huge lead into season eight. Gotcha. So. I, the only other thing I'll say, sure. and it's not a bold prediction, which is why I didn't bring it up, I definitely feel we're in an Empire Strikes Back season. Yeah. Right? Where mm-hmm. things are going to, I feel like things are going to have to get dark at the end to make us like wonder about next season. Sure. Just for classic storytelling. All right. We've got a couple minutes till the premiere. We need I'm pumped. To go. Yeah. So uh, we're gonna go watch the show and then uh, tune back in at afterwards, and we'll. Uh... Woo! Game of Thrones, baby!